I'm Marie, I'm one of your Marker Pop colorists, and today we'll color this image, adorable image by CC Designs, called Autumn Teddy. We'll do a little colorless blender technique on the teddy bear, and we'll do a little review of the pumpkin. So let's get started. Today I'm going to be doing a combo with E30, E31, E33, E35, and an optional E39. I'm going to do a combination of techniques to create fur on an autumn teddy bear. This is called Autumn Teddy from CC Designs. And I stamped the image in Memento and colored this on Cryogen. You can see kind of the iridescent coloring in the background. I'm going to have my light source coming from, uh, as you look on the screen, your upper left. I'm applying just a base coat with the E30. You don't have to be careful with this, but as I mentioned, I'm doing a combination of three techniques, both the um, laying a base coat with some dimensional shadowing, um, I'm going to be adding a stippled technique and I'm going to be also doing a colorless blender technique for the fur. So I'm combining all three techniques. So establishing the base coat and on this video I'll just basically review the, the coloring of the head of the teddy bear uh, and just putting that base coat in. I'm going to be using my next darker color and beginning some dimensional shading, flicking toward the center. My light source will be coming from your upper left, so my shadowing will be heavier over on your right side. And just flicking inward with my E30. Careful not to go over the uh, the part that I want the very lightest because every time you go over that even though it is your light you will add particle particles that will darken the shade. I'm taking my next color and uh, my mid-tone and we're flicking in just a little. The initial darkening of it was mapping where I want to have my shadows. Now I'm actually putting some of those um, shadows in place with my lighter mid-tone. Again, just kind of doing some stippling techniques with this. Those are a dotted technique, just up and down little dots. It's kind of like a technique that was stemmed from uh, a rapidograph technique that used to use that for coloring the entire uh, pictures. They used to create entire pictures with um, just stippling little tiny things with a rapidograph pen. It was um, usually done in black and white, but you could do it with color. Now we're just, again, stippling in with our very lightest color. Again, careful not to go over the very highlight too many times. I hope you like this image. I think it's just so cute. Now I'm going to be darkening with my shadow side just a little in areas that would be in greatest shadow. And because the head is rounded, you'll also want to do the perimeter of the head just to give that shape, that three-dimensional shape. And I'm blending out with my mid-tone, just from the outer edge. When you stipple, you can overlap slightly, a little more than if you were doing a natural blending. Now we're going in with our uh, lightest mid-tone almost making a little bit almost of a crescent highlight 
um, because that's how the light hits it. <clears throat> and again, you know, fur will never reflect as much light as something that would be solid, glass or plastic or what have you, but it still catches a little bit of the highlight. And we're just touching up, adding some more dimension to areas that needed some more shadow. You can always keep reworking your image. The more you rework the image, um, I think the happier you'll be with it. it um, it's important to keep looking at your images um, as you're working and seeing what areas you can rework to add more dimension, add more contrast. And the E39 is totally optional if you would like to add a higher intensity. But again, um, a lot of people don't like the higher intensity. It's up to you, but give it a try. See if you like this. I'm someone who loves high intensity. I think it adds more um, dimension. So just continue that process and then blending it out with your um, mid-tone and then your highlights. Just continue to work and get a nice blend. There you have um, some good dimension there. Now we're going to just add a colorless blender, the third technique I talked to you about. I have this video um, on kind of fast forward so that we don't um, take too much time, but you will hold it down for about three seconds, full seconds every time you put the colorless blender down. So continue that process and now let's move on to the pumpkin. We'll be using YR14, YR07, YR04, YR02, and YR01. This is a little different color combo than we used uh, a couple weeks ago. For high intensity, again, totally optional, uh, R38 added to the very sparingly. So now here's our little um, furry fellow and we're going to start by just coloring in our pumpkin with our very lightest tone. Again highlight being consistent coming from your upper left hand corner allowing each little segment of that pumpkin to pop up some, catch some of that light. There we go. Then we'll take our shadow and put it in, um, apply it to the areas not getting quite as much light source. Making sure that the segments of your pumpkin really pop up. And then taking our mid-tone from the outer edge of your contrast, blending upward and inward slightly. Not too much because you have a few more colors to go. You don't want to obscure your highlight. Moving to the YR04, flicking inward, upward. Keeping your light source the, consistent with the teddy bear and then your YR02, making sure that you have a clean nib. Going over it so lightly. Now, I think that if you wanted to stop right there, you'd be just fine, have great dimension, great contrast. But if you want to be brave, you can take this um, deep, deep intensity, the R, 3, 9, and just use it ever so sparingly, very sparingly, in just a couple little places that will have the deepest shadow, and then place your YR18 right on top of it, flicking up and out, blending it in. You'll want to use it so sparingly, but can you see what a rich shadow 
that produces. Either way is fine, but I really like the dark brown, almost a brown colored shadow that um, you can see when you use that deep contrast. To use it too much would make it too dark, but sparingly and sandwich it in between your other is beautiful. So there you have it. This is a sample of my card that I've created and um, I just I think this is makes such a beautiful little autumn card. I used this beautiful Bow Bunny designer paper called Autumn Sawn Collection and I created the bow out of my leftover scraps. Okay, thank you so much and have a great day. If you see this on YouTube, I hope you like you share and you subscribe.